Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this Senate office building. How's, how are everybody's meetings? Good? Did you share the host a message? Yes. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask the 13 uh, spokesperson to come up to the front rows and sit up here. You'll be called up very soon to present your team's memories and assignment. First, our first order of business, I would like to invite Mr. Safakas to come up and share how we thank uh, our sponsors that made us be in this building today. And he'll have a couple of words about your visits to Capitol Hill and how to make a greater impact now that you've gone and visited. So let's give him a hand of applause. Well, thank you, everybody. Hope you had a great series of meetings today. I know from the folks that we've spoken to, it's been a very uh, impactful and um, important day for HOSA to be able to tell the HOSA story on Capitol Hill. Uh, I would like to say uh, a note of thanks. Uh, we should be having someone from uh, Senator Reed's office from Nevada uh, stopping by. But in advance, I'd like to say uh, we'd like to thank Senator Reed's office for their assistance in securing this amazing room. Uh, this hearing room in the special uh, Senate side, uh, sort of biased to the Senate side, having worked up here, but it's a very special location and one worthy of an organization like HOSA. So I'd like to say deep gratitude to Senator Reed for his assistance. And also to say that on occasion we may reach out to you all to uh, engage with the Hill on specific items. And so today is the beginning of engagement and we'd love for you to all stay uh, in touch with the members, their staff, and the uh, state representatives uh, back home. So uh, if you do receive a message at some point about engaging on Perkins or whatever it may be, please uh, uh, do so and we appreciate your support. So for that, go HOSA. Thank you to all of you for being our advocates. Uh, without you, we wouldn't have a strong presence and a growing presence for healthcare and for HOSA. First, I would like to bring up our dear, my dear friend, uh, Piyush Puri. He will be sharing uh, our experience as the national officers here at WLA, and then we'll begin with our 13 Courage team. So let's give him a round of applause. Hi everyone, how's everyone doing today? Now, there's nothing more contagious than the energy of those around you. And I sincerely, on behalf of the entire National Host of Staff and Executive Council, want to thank all of you for inspiring us with your contagious energy throughout the past four days. Now, when we met after our election a couple months ago in Orlando, we, we discussed WLA and we thought we have all these remarkable leaders together for four days in Washington, DC. What magic can we create? And we realized there's a sense of comfort around basic leadership skills, public speaking, dining etiquette, how to nail the job interview. And we realized that since you guys are here, since the membership has trusted you to represent HOSA at the state level, you are more than capable of those basic leadership skills. So what do we do when we're all here together? And we decided we're gonna ask you to lead with courage and look really deep within yourself. Be your own biggest critic. And that's hard in a, in a time when we're really encouraged to be our biggest fans. So the National Executive Council decided to implement the plus one system, the concept that everyone has a degree where they're at and there's constantly room to grow. And it's hard to adapt that growth mindset. And each and every one of you with your courage teams was able to lead with courage, adapt that mindset and really grow. And the National Executive Council could not be happier with how the past couple of days have gone and the immense growth we've seen for ourselves, being inspired by you, and the growth we've seen in the membership in general. With that, I'm really excited for the advisors and guests in this room to hear how much these teams have grown with this growth mindset and moving away from the comfort zone that lies within basic leadership skills. On that note, would we give a big round of applause to Haley Gorski from Michigan, who will be starting us off. Good afternoon, everyone. 
My name is Haley Gorski and I'm from Michigan. If someone were to ask me what WLA was before I came here, I would simply say a leadership conference. If someone were to ask me now, I would say a leadership conference except on steroids. <laughs> this WLA conference has given me the confidence to meet new people around the world, develop new leadership skills, and help me discover who I really am. We've talked a lot about emotional intelligence. I don't think I've ever been more aware of my ability to influence a situation. Throughout our time here in Washington, D.C., we have been learning skills called plus ones, techniques to better ourselves and others. My team, the presidents, have decided that open-ended questions are one of the more important plus ones, simply because we wouldn't have become so close without them. We decided we would implement open-ended questions when we move back to our states by focusing more of our attention on others, not just ourselves. Now go back to the very first day here at WLA. We were all given an assignment to write down everyday acts of courage. As my team started writing down our list, the word nonconformity stuck and has had the most powerful impact on our lives. As a teenager, conformity is self-preservation. If you're going to survive on the safari, conformity is the camouflage. Nonconformity, on the other hand, is being your own person and standing up for what you believe in. Personally, I am quick to compare myself to other people and adapt myself to fit in. Our discussions around nonconformity these past four days have helped me realize that I can't live my life based off the way others live theirs. I must break out of my shell and be the real me. This conference has given me the courage to do that and to lead. I know I'm young and emotionally spent. This has been a long four days. Maybe this will be another leadership conference that I soon forget, but I don't think so. WLA has changed my life forever as an, and is an experience I will not forget. I would like to thank my courage team, the presidents, and my Michigan host of state officers as well as every state officer and chaperone in this room. Thank you for being so nice, welcoming, and leading so courageously. Also, for making this the most memorable four days of my life. Thank you. And now, Matt Russell from Missouri Hosa. Hello everybody, my name is Matthew Russell and coming to WLA changed my life. But before I get into my speech, I'd first like to thank everybody here that has made WLA possible and I'd like to point out the National Institute of Health who we were all granted the opportunity to watch a presentation at, at USU, the Uniform Services University. But before I delve further into my speech, I'd like to kind of make a connection with all of you. A connection that I think that at one point in our lives we all shared walking into high school and not knowing where you stood, not knowing what you wanted to do, not knowing where you were going. It felt like a long, dark hallway for me, one that I just, I wasn't sure of. But with the clubs and the opportunities that were at my high school, I felt like there was a lot of doors to be opened. But one door stood out to me the most, and that was HOSA. Through HOSA, I could see the light shining through the cracks. And when I opened up that door, I was met with a room full of friendly faces and opportunity. A room, much like the room I stand in right now, a room full of friendly faces and leaders and people that I know in the future are going to be changing the world and I want to be right at their side, right at your side, changing the world. Now, one thing that stood out to me the most over this past weekend, this, this week at WLA, was not the leadership skills that the WLA directors and the National Executive Council taught us, but was rather the skills they instituted into us, was the ability to enrich our ideas. You see, the great thing about the people in this room, the people I'm standing among, is that we all have some natural instinct of leadership. We all have that 
natural ability to inspire in others and encourage others and to strive courage into others. But the thing I'm walking away finding the most valuable was WA's ability to enrich my ideas, to enrich my ability to expand on my ideas. And just the same to you, the ability to take, char take charge of opportunity, the opportunities that are going to come knocking at our door. So what I've learned is that WLA and HOSA and the opportunities that are growing across the United States is something that we need to expand on and we need to grow and we need to work to make sure that every other member, every other high school student knows that this door is down in that long dark hallway waiting for them. That inside that door is people like us and people like the WLA directors and the people that I'm standing among right now welcoming them with open arms. So what I'm asking you to do is to be that change. Be that person standing there holding that door open for them, just as all of you held that door open for me. Because I, I owe it to you to be standing here in Washington, D.C. on behalf of Missouri Hosa, representing the 1,800 students that elected me. I owe that to you. I owe all that thanks to you. The benefit to us will be that one day we'll be changing the future. We'll be the ones standing up here changing other future, other future HOSA members. So I, I stand up here. I just can't stand in enough appreciation. But thank you, WA and the National Executive Council and everybody who made this possible. And now we're going to have Travis Markham from Florida HOSA. Hi, everybody. So what I want to talk about is, uh, I'm going to open up with this. Uh, most of us, if you really think back, most of us probably weren't taught how to walk. Nobody can sit in front of you and give you instructions saying, all right, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. Contract these muscles. Find your balance. You learn things by doing them and by watching other people do them. So in that respect, a lot of things that take us the farthest in life, physically and metaphorically, we pick up on our own through experience, through trial and error. And in that same way, one of the things that our team, I think, learned the most this weekend wasn't something that was as, uh, actually presented in a workshop. I think that what we learned is uh, what's important in this life is making, making yourself about people. And what I mean by that is so often we are stuck in this paradigm where we're trying to lift ourselves up. We want to feel good about ourselves. That's a natural tendency. But something that we've learned, especially as a team, We've been bonding, and what we found is that, is that by making your life about people and making others feel welcome, making that your focus, making others feel accepted, that's what takes you the farthest. That's what creates these relationships, and that's what I love about HOSA. That's what we love about HOSA. I'll tell you, um, Karen was in our group. I'm sure you've all, I'm sure you've all heard about Karen. It was, what an amazing one. I'm going to clap for Karen real quick. Talk about courage. Talk about courage. Courage is being willing to step outside your comfort zone and be willing to put yourself out there and expose yourself to risk from other people and from experiences. And I can tell we've all done that this weekend, haven't we? I think we have. <laughs> Thank you. So this has been a great WLA for me. And that's what we've learned, is that making your life about people and about creating experience for people. What is it we said? People don't remember what you say, what you look like, but they remember how you make them feel. I can tell you that just walking by somebody and getting a smile from them, a, a, a friendly gesture, means more than most words can describe. I think I'm not alone in that. But speaking of people, one group I want to acknowledge. If you're a state advisor in this room, please stand up. Please stand up if you're a state advisor. Come on. These people have the courage to believe in us. They're here away from their families, their friends, their commitments. We all have lives outside of HOSA, am I correct in saying that? We're missing class, we're missing things. But, and these people know that sacrifice more than anything else. They sacrifice for us, and I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for HOSA. We're thankful for HOSA. Thank you.
And now I'd like to welcome Clayton Sims from Florida Hosa. Hey guys. Uh, first, I'd like to echo Mr. Safakis and say thank you to Senator Reed for giving this space to us. Um, I know it can be hard to accommodate such large groups like Hosa, but um, it means a lot. And we're all here because of the help that we receive from other people. Um, uh, I'd like to start by sharing the story from uh, one of the girls in my courage team, the congressmen. Um, uh, when she was little, uh, she was abused growing up by her father, uh, she and her siblings, for years. And uh, one day, she takes her little brother to the hospital because he's got a broken wrist. And they walk in. Uh, they're handled by nurses, physicians, the whole shebang, and they're sent on their way. Nobody, nobody asked questions, nobody noticed the bruises, uh, the fear, the dejection. They were accepted, helped, and sent away. And we all understand that that's not what the medical profession is about. It's about helping people, it's about being there for others, it's about stepping up and standing there and welcoming those in need. And that's why we're here. We're here to become better leaders. We're here to learn from one another and from experience and to be able to take what we've learned and push it forward and pay it forward for the people in our lives and the people in other people's lives. Because that's what being a medical professional is about. It's about standing up for what you believe in and doing what is right and helping others. Um, it's about being brave, being bold. The bold are always lucky. And uh, I'd like to thank Jessica from North Dakota for having the courage to come here by herself. I can't imagine what that's like. Um, and for that matter, I think we, we really need to take a step back and examine the courage of everyday people. I mean, we're all here because we want to be. We don't have to be. And we could very easily just sit down, not look each other in the eye, not stand up, and be as present as we are. So I think really everyone here deserves to be thanked for being here. Um, you take a look outside of the National Mall and you see all these amazing monuments for uh, people that we consider to be the titans of our history. I mean, these people are, they're enormous in our eyes, but they were just people at some point. I mean, they grew up, they were born, they were children, they had struggles, people looked down on them, people looked up to them, and now they're these these incredible milestones in our nation's history. And I, I look around this room, and I see all these bright faces, and I know I'm going to be hearing your names again. I'm going to be seeing names in lights, in headlines, on articles, uh, new technological developments, new surgical procedures. You guys, all of you, are going to be somebody. And I'm proud to be a part of that. Thank you. And now, Barbara Sanchez from Florida Hosa. Well, good afternoon, everybody. As he said before, my name is Barbara Sanchez. I am from Florida Hosa. And Hosa is here to provide us with the skills, knowledge, and experience to become the future of the healthcare profession. Now, congratulations. I just ganapped you. GNAP is one of the skills that we learned in WLA. It's one of the many skills that we're going to take out of this conference, implement it into our everyday lives. Now, I look among you guys, and you guys are staring at me. It's kind of intimidating. But it's kind of, I appreciate it, because you guys are the future. And you guys are healthcare professionals already. You guys have done internships, volunteer work, searches, studies. You guys ask each other questions. You guys want to know what's going on. And being here in our nation's capital, 
right where all the fundamental values of our country is at. Like my voice is shaking because I'm so inspired by this. Going out there and seeing all the monuments, seeing how these people have changed our country, changed our lives. It's crazy because we are that same people. We have changed other people's lives within our delegation and within our communities. Now, being in WLA, this is my very first time even flying to Washington, D.C. Like, this is my first time being in this area whatsoever. And many of you guys are in the same position, but many of you guys have been here before. And those of you who have been here before, I would like to thank you for being that guidance to our, us newbies who probably have no idea what we're doing, who probably get lost, like me a lot, the ones who are kind of falling behind because we want to follow those ahead of us because we know that they have those experiences. When you guys go back to your delegations, your members will follow you half cluelessly, half in hopes of aspiring to be you, and you have to be that leader with courage that the National Executive Council has taught us to be. And at first, I'd like to thank the HOSA Inc. Executive Committee and the other members of the HOSA community that has made this academy, made this trip possible for every single one of us. And I'd like to thank also our, each state that has come here because it takes a lot to bring all of us here into one gathering for four days in order to grow. And the fact that we all grow here is amazing. The fact that we all can better ourselves, even just four days, in four days, how much have you changed? I've changed tremendously four days. What else have you done in four days? Maybe you took a vacation, you've made memories. Well, here, I've made memories that impacted my life and that will forever impact my life. I've met people from Hawaii, from Puerto Rico, Indiana, Ohio, from east to west, north to south. And each of you have a story. Each of you have that spark that lights a fire inside of you. And it's great to hear that because you see the passion in their eyes. And that's what HOSA gives all of us. It gives us that passion to help others, to be future health leaders. And so in conclusion, I would just like to thank all of you for giving me the best four days that I've had in a long time. Because you guys are my family. And, wow. And it's just, I may not remember all of your names because I'm really bad with names, but I can't forget faces. And I can't forget what you guys have made me feel. Host is amazing, you guys are amazing, and I applaud all of you. Um, we have a special guest with us, a staffer from Congressman Burgess's office is in the back. I don't know if he would like to come up and say a couple of words on behalf of the congressman. So let's welcome him. Thanks so much. Well, thank you all. Um, for those of you who were here last year, you got to hear me. Um, you don't have to pay attention because I'm going to say the same exact thing I said last year. Uh, but I'm J.P. Polskavich. I'm Congressman and Dr. Michael Burgess's uh, Deputy Chief of Staff, uh, and I manage uh, his health care portfolio um, with, uh, with my team. And I, I just want to thank you for, for be, being here, for having me here. The congressman wishes he was here. Unfortunately, as you have probably figured out, Congress is out of session this week, and so he is back home in North Texas, very close to where uh, HOSA is based. Um, we are proud to represent HOSA in Congress and bring your issues uh, to other members. And I, I just, I, I mean, I keep saying thank you, but I really mean it. You guys are amazing to have identified at such an early age that you want to be on the front lines of healthcare in our nation is just extraordinary. I, I think you look around at most people your age, I mean, they don't even know what they're going to do for lunch, let alone <laughs> pick out the, the arguably one of the most noble professions, and that's being in healthcare. Um, my boss practiced medicine for uh, 25 years in North Texas before he was elected to Congress. Um, he is the most senior uh, Republican uh, healthcare uh, physician in the House. 
Um, and you know, he always says, healthcare as a profession will define you. He had never, he, he never dreams about introducing an amendment in committee, but he still dreams about medicine. And so, you know, I want you to think about that defining who you are. And, you know, young people will always ask him, well, you know, you, you've got these complaints about what's go going on in D.C. And, um, you know, I bet if, if somebody asked you today, would you go into the practice of medicine again? I, I bet you said you wouldn't go to medical school. And he says, oh, to the contrary. He goes, it is going to be so exciting to be in healthcare going forward. The tools at your fingertips to alleviate human suffering are going to be unlike any known in the history of mankind. And that's going to be something special you're going to get to enjoy and be part of. And so you have that to look forward to. But I also appreciate that you're getting used to coming to Washington, D.C. Because being in healthcare, you're going to be so focused on your patients, on those you interact with. But if there is one place that without any input from y'all, we can really screw up what you guys are going to be doing as a career. It is right here. <laughs> and, and we're politicians, so we're going to screw it up and then want to be thanked for it. And we're going to get really upset if you don't. So thank you for getting used to getting involved, for being up here um, and realizing that you need to be part of the discussion about health care up here, no matter what your politics are, because we can make changes that are going to reverberate from everything from the tools you are going to have at your fingertips, the ability to give you those tools, how we're going to give them to you, and then the ability to use them, and uh, you know, if your patients can access them. Um, and so just you know, think about that, uh, how important it is to be involved. And there is a, a you have such a, a credibility going into the healthcare workforce that you need to realize very young. People inherently trust healthcare providers. There's a reason my boss prefers to still go by doctor over congressman. Yeah, well, it polls a lot better. But other than that, <laughs> it, it is that inherent trust that you have someone's best interest at heart. And you can bring that credibility to Washington, D.C. and to your state house capitals. So with, I want to wrap up on one important point, one other point, and you, know, you may not be hearing a lot about it, but there's a bold initiative going on in a bipartisan fashion in the House Energy and Commerce Committee, which is the committee we sit on and serve as vice chairman of the Health Subcommittee. And it's called the 21st Century Cures Initiative. And it's the first time Congress is taking a soup to nuts look at the development of tools that one day could be in your hands in your interaction with patients. And that goes from basic medical research all the way down to coverage policies. Um, I've never seen anything so bold in my 15 years up here. Um, it is all hands on deck and it is bipartisan. And these are conversations, you know, actually asking the question, why do we have thousands of diseases and hundreds of cures? Think about that. There is, you know, only a small percentage of all known diseases we can actually cure. What can we do to up that number? And these are decisions that are going to be part of your lives. So I urge you to go to the Energy and Commerce website, look at Path to Cures, um, and be part of the discussion to the extent that there are things we could be doing that maybe if we put a policy in place 10 years from now, when it will matter to you and your future patients, why don't we start working on it now and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you again on behalf of Congressman Burgess. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me speak. Please let's thank again Congressman Burgess and his Chief of Staff for having a long support of OSA. Please help me welcome Aditya Madhuri from New Jersey HOSA. Hi everybody. Hi. So um, first of all, this past four days have been Pretty amazing. I met some of my best friends. That's probably going to be my best friends forever. Um, I got to meet some amazing people. I got to see amazing statues. We got to see that um, the institute um, with like amazing technology. <laughs> I don't know. There's no other way I can express how amazing this whole trip was. And I would like to thank, first of all, the HOSA headquarters staff. So please give, give, please give them a round of applause. So 
So this four days, we learned a lot about courage, leadership, and communication. And communication was one of the things that I personally had to uh, uh, actually self-evaluate. Now, as you can see, I'm not the most fluid speaker, but the thing is that um, as I start evaluating myself, it's not just me, it's or even our group, um, people were kind of afraid to have a full-on conversation with someone we just met. And we started looking at what was going wrong. And one of the things that we learned was we weren't asking the right questions. We were asking questions in which we would say, um, how are you? Good, I'm good. You know, instead of asking, um, what, what are you planning to do with this trip, you know? We weren't asking open-ended questions where they would actually have a full-on response, where we can actually build a conversation. But when we, got the, when we got the lessons from our executive council, I actually got to learn so much from them. And during our um, treasure, treasure hunt, um, we actually kind of got lost, the senators, you know. Um, but the thing is that we don't regret a thing about it, because the whole trip, the whole walk, um, we just, we bonded. We bonded, and we talked to each other, and we got really close. And I'm probably going to be pretty upset by the end of the day, because I don't know when I'm going to see them again. Um, but, sorry, one sec. But the thing is that, the main point is that um, my group really was my plus, uh, plus one, where they actually made me feel so comfortable in, my, in our table that it's not just me. Everyone made each other comfortable. So it was, like was kind of like our home. So we could, we could just break out of our shells and we could just go meet anyone, we could talk to anyone. And if we mess up or anything, I knew I could just come back home. And you know, I would, I would still be loved by everybody in, the t in our table. So I'd like to thank my group, the Senators. Um, also, uh, sorry, one second. This is, I just, I'm very emotionally charged right now because it's just, this trip has been so memorable to me. And it's, it's how Maya Angelou put it. Um, people will forget how, um, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna, I wanna say it properly. Um, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never make you. Uh, people will never forget what you did. Um, I mean, how'd you make them fail? <laughs> and my my team, uh, they really made me feel pretty amazing. So I would like to thank you guys. Thank you. And now for Michigan Hosa, Zach Holdwick. How's everybody doing? All right, I'm Zach Holdwick from Michigan HOSA. Uh, leadership can mean many different things to everybody, and everybody sees leadership differently. Being here in Washington, D.C. for the WLA, I feel like it helped us all embrace what leadership means. Like my group, the Minutemen, going from the Washington Monument to seeing where Martin Luther King gave his I Have a Dream speech in front of the Lincoln Memorial, I think it made us appreciate leadership of this country and the great leaders that we have. Um, okay, My group was, I'm going to just go out on one here, my group was one of the best groups that I could ever been with. I loved everybody in the group. They made me feel open. Um, I'm going to miss them all. I, I seriously will. Um, this is really personal for me. One of the stories that we had, um, walking from monument to monument, we had a very competitive group. Um, they all like, we all like to run. And we had a couple people that liked to, I guess you could say straggle, but they were always, we always had to wait for them. And it was a good aspect because it made us bond and appreciate being with each other and the time that we had to spend with each other. Um, the tasks that we did going from monument to monument were all designed in the way that you need your team to function as a whole. There's no I in team. Um, it really made us realize that people that, when you try to lead, you lead how you want to be led. You don't lead how you th like everybody else wants to be led. Everybody sees leadership different. So the way that that came out for me was that we really need to be aware of how everybody else wants to be led, not just us. It's not all about I, it has to be about we. And once you're aware of how people want to be led, you need to know what to do once you're aware. And that was a great thing that WLA brought out, was that 
once you're aware, it taught us what to do once we're aware. Um, another story that I have, like me, I'm from Michigan. I see squirrels everywhere. We had two girls in our group that had never seen a squirrel before. And they were sitting there taking pictures of squirrels, and I'm like, it's, it's a squirrel. Like, it's, they're everywhere. And they're like, I've never seen a squirrel, but you know, we have cactus growing in our front yard, or we have deer running around. And I'm like, OK. But other than that, um, I'd like to thank the Medical Reserve Corps and uh, USIS for everything that they did for us. And I really hope to see everybody soon. My group was amazing. The Minutemen, let's give them a round of applause. And I, just, I hope I get to see you guys more. We're all future health professionals here. We need to make everything of what we're going to do with our lives. And I think everybody's going to do great. You guys are all amazing people. You guys all inspire me so much. All the uh, advisors and everybody, they're great. And um, thank you guys. And please help me welcome Connor Hickman from South Dakota, Jose. Hello, everybody. Uh, as he said, I'm Connor Hickman. I'm from South Dakota. I am representing the Liberals. And I just want to say um, I've had several amazing memories with all of you. Um, I'm just going to share one of them right away. Uh, during the scavenger hunt, when we first started, it was really kind of three groups in one because there was like the three really energetic people in front, like running ahead. And then there was about two people in between there that were like the wishy-washy group. They were just kind of sat there. And then there was the three people in the very back that were just taking in all the scenery and taking pictures. And, you know, by the end of it, actually probably about halfway through it, you know, everyone kind of realized that this wasn't about winning or losing or getting there first. It was about growing as a team. And I think that was the whole point of the scavenger hunt was so that everybody could learn from each other and everyone could grow as a team. Um, you know, a, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So in a team, if there's only three people growing and everybody, is, everybody else is staying back, that team is still only as good as the three people that stayed back. Um, so I want you to picture this. So, Picture a flower, and if the flower grows, and only the petals grow, but the stem doesn't, the flower is going to fall over. But if you think about it the other way, if only the stem grows, but the petals don't, well then it's just a really ugly flower. So then it's pointless. So, um, you know, of course, Hosa, we all grow as people and as future health professionals, but. It also teaches everybody to appreciate the little things in life. Um, you know, a prime example of this is how many of you were in the rain when we were doing the monuments at night? Yeah, see? Now, how many of you will never forget that experience? <laughs> see? And it was the experience that you spent with your friends. And actually, you know, like Barbara said, it's not, it wasn't even your friends. Um, you know, everybody here, we're all family. Everybody is. Everybody cares about each other. And this is just one big HOSA family. Um, so I just want to say thank you for everyone who spent the last four days here. It's been amazing. And I wish the best of luck to all of you in your future healthcare um, endeavors. And thank you all for being my family for the past four days. Please help me welcome Selena Gappy from Michigan Hosa. Hi, everyone. So, leadership can mean different things to different people. For others visiting Washington, D.C. this past weekend, um, it's not just the capital of the USA to them, but the capital of leadership. And to me, that means that this is probably the best place for all of us to meet because what better place is there for the leaders of the future of healthcare. From monuments to marriage proposals, this week was filled with so many memories that I'm sure none of us will soon forget. As for our group, the Sons and Daughters of Liberty, we definitely made a lot of memories and I'm sure that we all took a lot of lessons from it, but one special lesson on courage. Now when we all think of leaders, we often think of the person standing out in front and giving out directions, 
But really, do we stop and think about who else is being the leader in that group? If you're looking at the dynamic of it, being able to humble yourself enough and follow and support the person that's giving out the directions also makes you a really strong leader. And somewhere that we saw that really prevalent was when we were doing our scavenger hunt in the DC mall. When we were doing the scavenger hunt, all of us had different responsibilities and some of us were better at it than others, but all together towards the end, we all ended up fitting and making sure that we were all supporting each other no matter what our roles were. And I think that's what makes true leaders. We all were often supporting each other and making sure that we all made it across that finish line and finished it completely all together. And I think the greatest part about all of this is that we can always take these lessons that we learned and take them back to our states. And that all the lessons that we learned, especially from our National Executive Council, we can definitely give back to every single member in all the local chapters. As far as our group goes, I want to say a special thank you to all of the Sons and Daughters of Liberty because you totally made this the most amazing experience ever. So can we just give them a round of applause, please? And lastly, I would like to give a quick thanks just to the real leaders that have been making sure that we can secure our congressional meetings with our um, congressional staff, the Washington, D.C. staff, so we can give them a round of a hand, please. And that's all. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming Rosalia Salzadar from Nevada, Jose. Wow, all of those speeches were actually really good, and I. <laughs> I mean, you guys are all really good speakers. Can I just have like a round of applause for everybody? So I decided to not write a speech and just speak from the heart. Because after all, um, one, I'm not good at writing and can't read my own handwriting because I'm dyslexic. And then two, because I'd rather just speak from the heart and just tell everybody how amazing this, this Washington Leadership Academy was. So many of you may know me as Rosie or if you know my full name, is Rosalia, um, and I'm from Nevada, Hosa. And I had the amazing honor to be in the executive's um, courage team. So uh, thank you guys for being my team. It was really amazing. Um, I guess I just kind of want to go back to the first day that we were put into our teams. Honestly, I was absolutely shy. And, you know, I was very intimidated. This is my first time at WLA as a state officer, and I didn't really know what to expect. And boy, was I in for a treat. Because everybody that I met, all of the stories and testimonies that I heard were absolutely amazing, and they inspired me to become a better me. They inspired me to continue spreading the message of HOSA and, con and continue to inspire others. We are the future of this country, of this nation. And I believe that every single one of you have unlimited potential. I remember on the scavenger hunt, we were going, we, we were actually extremely competitive at first. We were like, okay, well, we're, we're not gonna need like the full time. We're only gonna use like maybe an hour and a half and then we're gonna be at the finish line. We're gonna finish first and we're gonna be awesome and yeah, let's go, rock on. But no, <laughs> that kind of just ended like at the first monument. Uh, we were like, okay, let's take pictures. So that's what we did. We took pictures, and it was absolutely great because we took in the scenery, and we actually enjoyed WLA for the experience. It's not always about competition. It's about getting to know your environment, getting to know the people around you, networking, building connections with people, and just making an impact. I think one of my favorite memories, and this is a little bit funny, was when we were um, finishing one of the tasks um, in one of the memorials, and we had to like form a letter. And then we saw this little girl, and she was like chasing after a squirrel. She's like, ah, ah, it's a squirrel. 
And we were just laughing and laughing. And I'm like, oh my God, it's a squirrel. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but Las Vegas, Nevada doesn't have many squirrels, if none at all. I have a rock outside, so that's all I know, rocks and cactus. But I thought it was really funny, so that's just something that was really amazing. And, you know, getting to know the national officers through every memorial that we went to and every memorial that we stopped at, and just networking with them and talking to them and getting to know their story and their host a testimonial throughout this conference and even before and at NLC, it was absolutely amazing. Why? Because we look up to them because they're knowledgeable and they have passion. We have passion. <laughs> So I would like to thank the National Executive Council. Can everybody join me in giving them a round of applause? And please stand. Okay. So I want to leave everybody with a quote. It's by Rolf Waldo Emerson. He's a transcendentalist. Um, it says, uh, go confidently in the direction of your dreams and live the life that you have imagined. Like I said earlier, everybody in here has unlimited potential. And I say this very often, you are all the painters to this beautiful blank canvas. Make it your own, tell your story, have your voice be heard, and let everybody know what HOSA is really all about. Thank you. And now, please help me welcome Albert Vargas from California, Jose. Hello, everyone. Like you said, my name is Alberto Vargas, and I'm from California, Jose. <laughs> the main thing that I believe I learned from WLA these past three days was the amount of courage that we were able to obtain from our courage teams. And the way I say that is because Every single human being on this world has a gift of courage, but not everyone chooses to actually use that gift. You know, they don't put it into good work, and we do. We took courage by coming here to WLA, because we know that we are able to become better. We are not afraid to express that we are always finding room for improvement. We took courage because we actually came and was, were able to talk to our representatives, someone with a high office, and we were able to talk to them. I mean, I find that really amazing. Now, my courage team, I found it to be one of the best experiences of WLA because we were able to express our thoughts, we found security within ourselves, and I know a lot of you had that same feeling as I do too. Now, where did the courage come from? I mean, we were able to do all these amazing things, but ask yourself the question, where did we get this courage from? Well, I thought it came from my team because their support really meant to me. And knowing that I had support from my team enabled me to pursue anything that I wanted to do and you know, build upon anything. And most of you guys probably also feel the same way. And I think something that's really important is that since we are a family, not only does our courage teams, we find that in our courage teams, we also find that amongst ourselves. I know I can go up to any one of you guys at any time, probably you know, via Facebook, and ask you guys a question, and you guys would be there for me. And I'm really proud to have a family like that. I'm really proud to have friends like you guys that I can go up to. Because personally, I was a shy kid, but because of HOSA, I was able to find friends and connect in a much higher level, causing me to find the courage to improve. And I thank all of you guys. So lastly, I want to you know, say thanks to my courage team, the governors, because I really appreciate everything that you guys have done for me this past three days, as well as the US Public Health Service, as well as the Surgeon General Office. Can we give a clap of hands? So I just want to leave you guys off by saying I really hope we stay connected because the connections that we made to, to these three days are going to be cherished with me at least for the rest of my life. And I hope it does with you too.
That's it. Thank you. Next is Joby Silosa from Hawaii. So before I start my speech, I just want to remind everyone that there are 13 of us who were elected to speak. But in the conference, there's 127 students that weren't elected, not because of their inability to speak, but because of the time restraints. So before I start my speech, I want to give a round of applause to the students who didn't get to speak, because I know that you deserve to speak as well. So addressing the Patriots on their fight for independence, Thomas Paine writes in his pamphlet, Common Sense, it is not in numbers, but in unity that our great strength lies. HOSA, although commonly known as an organization for future health professionals, the delegates at WLA, the 2014 Washington Leader Academy, know that HOSA is more than that. What started as, what started as a resume filler for many of us, transgressed to become part of our dreams, our goals, our ambitions, and our future. Attending WLA, the student leaders were given the opportunity to enhance their skills in our nation's capital. A breathtaking experience. Each and every one of us were reminded that of the courageous leadership that has continuously cultivated and transgressed our nation. As leaders, we are so accustomed to being in charge, to being the, uh, the one whom others look up to. However, when put in a group with other leaders, no one was able to take charge at first, and things were a little bit awkward. Even though the diversity in our group was eminent, we were able to uh, we are able to rise above our adversity and successfully come together to become a family. At WLA, the students are reminded that although we all aim for perfection, although we all want to be leaders, and although we always want to be right, we, we, there are some times where not everything can be perfect. Following suit of this year's HOSA theme, the Patriots decided that R plus one is HOSA, Future Health Professionals, a nationwide membership of young intellects a nationwide membership of young intellects to build off of and grow from. What separates the students here in attendance at WLA from your average student is that not only do we have these wild dreams and ambitions and goals, but we also have the tools and tactics to make these dreams a reality. However, we must also remember that we have each other. Whether it be our advisors, our state officer teams, the friends we made at WLA, or the National Executive Council, we must constantly remind ourselves that we are not alone, that there will always be a plus one. Coming to this realization was both a difficult task and a satisfying experience. However, it would not be possible without the time spent and the dedication of our courageous host of board chair, Mrs. Jane Shovlin. At this time, Ms. Jane Shovlin, I'd like to ask you to rise, and the members and students, I'd ask you to give her a huge round of applause for her time. So before I close, I'd like to leave you with something that I took from touring the National Mall. It was Martin Luther King Jr. who stated, out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. So to the innovators, the intellects, the ambitious and the bold, to the young women in this room here today, we are that stone of hope. We are the future health professionals. And we are HOSA, future health professionals. With that, my name is Joby Saloza from Hawaii HOSA. Go Patriots and go HOSA. Thank you. Next, we have Anthony from Texas. Before I start, I'd just like to tell you guys, I'm not going to talk to you as a state officer. So I'm going to go ahead and take my badge off and talk to you as a person. And if I have all the wigs stand up while I talk, please. If you're on my team, the wigs, go ahead, stand up. One way we got to know all of each other was by either verbal or nonverbal communication. Either it was glaring because we didn't agree or smiling because somebody fell or made a funny joke. But one thing we all had in common is that we all want to make the sacrifice not only healthcare professionals make, but the service members do as well. We all went to the Arlington Cemetery and saw all the hundreds of thousands of bodies that have already given the commitment. But as healthcare professionals, we put ourselves in the same situation by making sure they go home to see their moms and their dads, their brothers and their sisters. That's what we, as healthcare professionals, that's, that's what I live for and that's what some of us live for. 
is that all, that's all we ever wanted to do was to make sure somebody else can get home to see their moms or dads, whether we stay and work an 18-hour shift at the hospital or whether we don't even go home for a couple of days because we're making sure somebody else that we don't even know, won't even know their name or ever remember their faces, but they get to go home and see their families like the rest of us do. One of the things that affected us as a group was the Lincoln Memorial because we realized his values and what he stood for is what not only what all of us wish to be, but what HOSA stands for as well. He gave his time and his effort to make the country successful and to be what it could be. And all of us have the same opportunity within our states to make it successful and to build HOSA to what it needs to be. And the climax of our team was when we had the sitting game where we all had to burst our bubbles and sit on each other to make sure we didn't fall. And whether we didn't know each other, I barely knew anybody's name, but I did it. Not because I had to, we kind of had to, I mean, it was a, that's, but because we had to make the decision to make the sacrifice like many others have already have and many still do today. And to end this, on this note, water only boils at 212 and that's one of the plus ones we had learned, not 210 or 211. And as host of members, we don't need to reach 212, we should reach above 212 and make a new standard not only reach the bare minimum of 212, but to increase that to have other organizations top us. You guys are all state officers, and like I said, I'm talking to you as a person. I, I am from Texas, but I'm not talking to you as a state officer. I'm talking to you as a person, because we are all people. All the monuments you saw, they were all regular people. They all were kids one day. They all played in the dirt, had cuts on their arms, you know, liked people, thought, People were crazy and funny and cute and beautiful, all that stuff. But one thing we all have in common is courage, and that's what this last four days have been about. We all have the courage. We all decided to come here. We all decided to wake up at 6 in the morning to be here, whether we wanted to or not, even though me and I was late yesterday morning, but that's besides the point. <laughs> and to end, I just want to thank you all for coming here and giving me the experiences I have. Thank you. That was all of our Courage team, so can we give a round of applause to all of them? It has been a long week. It's exhausting, but full of learning. And I hope that what you learn, the experiences, the fun, you take it back home. You tell people what HOSA is, who we are, and what we represent. A lot of you noted national staff, uh, the National Executive Council, but the truth is that there would be no HOSA without you. Without the people you represent, we wouldn't be here. There wouldn't be 175,000 members nationwide. It's your work, the work of our local chapters that does it. So appreciate what they do. Tell them thank you for their work. Thank you for recruiting members. Thank you for spreading the word of HOSA all around. Without them, there wouldn't be a national HOSA, there wouldn't be a state HOSA. So when you go back home, thank your local chapters. They're the ones that we're all here serving and striving to improve every day. I hope that this WLA wasn't the national officer's WLA. It was your WLA. Your Washington Leadership Academy was made and shaped because of you, how you made it. Also, I would like to recognize somebody who prepared us for the Washington Leadership Academy, who we have not mentioned thus far, uh, Mr. Mark Burley and Paul Bowden, if you could stand for a second. <laughs> they were our mentors for this preparation. Without them, we wouldn't have gotten to the level we are today, and we wouldn't have been able to impart lessons and skills to all of you. They were instrumental, as you will be instrumental in teaching others and being the example to follow. Uh, I like to say that you are a city upon a hill. People will look up to you, and when they see you, they'll they say, that's Hosa. I want to be them. I was once in WLA, and I saw the national officers, and I said, I want to be 
one of them. I want to be the face of Hosa. I want to show everybody what the wonders and wonderful people of Hosa do all over the nation. So it's our appreciation of what you do every day, tirelessly, whether you have sleep or not at your conferences, when you give a workshop. So I hope that 2014, the Washington Leadership Academy was made for you and to your liking. So thank you. Thank all of you for making this a memorable experience. Thank you.